went over the hill on spread three. How about the driver? Well, he got clear all right, but the dozer's hardly good for spare parts. Hey, Cal, did you see this paper? Where'd you get a newspaper? <laughs> Scotty brought it in. It's only four days old. And maybe you don't know it, but we're heroes. Oh, sure, heroes. <laughs> no kidding. We have brought a new era of security and prosperity to this whole section. What it says here, right in print. Oh, yeah? My ticket says I'm cushioned pipe. <laughs> well, when this little old pipeline is finished, a lot of big, important people will be there for the ceremony. Hey, Cal, you suppose some uh, beauty queen might bust a bottle of champagne over the valve? I can't hardly wait. <laughs> you gonna be there? Listen, the minute this job's done, I'm going to bed. <laughs> for three days. <laughs> Maybe a week. <laughs> Meantime, how about jeeping along the string and picking up today's progress reports? Right. I'll be back before radio checkout. Hey, Cal, you suppose you'll be wearing a bathing suit, this beauty queen? I've seen a bathing suit before. Shove off. Well, it is all right there. The whole story of what the line means in terms of uh, expanding industry, more jobs, growing communities, more comfort and convenience for millions of folks. Almighty important. And yet, seems like they kind of overlooked one thing. How'd that little old pipeline get there? <laughs> that part I know. That's quite a story in itself. Now understand, this wasn't any one man job or one company. This was a teamwork proposition. Our engineers, together with concerns specializing in putting in right of way, trenching and pipe laying. After all, that's the kind of teamwork that does most of the really important jobs in the country. Maybe you never even heard of this line. Well, here it is. Runs from Cobb Station, just outside Charleston, West Virginia, to Rockville, Maryland, up near Washington and Baltimore, 262 miles. Not very long compared with the big inch and the little big inch that were built during the war. They run all the way down to Texas. No, <laughs> it's not the longest pipeline job, or the biggest. But one thing is for sure, it's the toughest. Men that worked on all three jobs named it the toughest inch. Of course, on the map, <laughs> looks like one straight line from point to point. But when you look at the country, boy, <laughs> they say God must have loved the West Virginia country because he had to wrinkle it up to get it all inside the state boundary line. I believe it. 262 miles and all rugged most every step of the way. Something else not on the map. 216 roads and highway crossings, nine railroads to bore under, two big rivers, and about a million little creeks and streams. Sometimes you wonder if the layout boys like to make it tough on purpose. But you don't say anything. Your job is to lay pipe. That starts with bushwhackers breaking the trail for the survey party. That calls for a good limber right arm. And a sharp eye, too. Remember, this is a wilderness. Awful easy for a man to get lost. Oh, yes. And keep your eye peeled for snakes, too. You'll see plenty. So many that after a while, you just tromp on them. Go on. Then comes the survey party. Of course, there's already been an aerial survey laying out the line across the peaks of the hills so it'll be safe from slides and washouts. 
But it takes men on shanks mares to search out how to bypass rock cliffs and soggy bottom swamps. With the right of way finally established, clearance starts. It's all hand work. Gotta be, because you can get machines in. Most of the time, you can't see any farther than the next tree ahead. But you keep on cutting, clearing, and burning up the limbs and brush. The big stuff you save to give to the hill people for firewood. <laughs> Just a good neighbor policy. After a while, you can look back on the clear hill behind you. <laughs> and that helps on the hill ahead. Now come the cats. And gasoline takes the place of sweat. Well, <laughs> maybe not entirely. Nothing takes the place of sweat out here. We used to think that these cats could go anywhere. But the toughest inch line changed that idea. Dozing downhill was fine, but getting back uphill, <laughs> that was something else. Why, man, some of those grades were so steep we had to use a second cat to winch the first one uphill and anchor that second cat to a tree to keep them both from running away. So gradually, mile by mile, the roadway for equipment is gouged out. Roadway? Well, that's what it's called on the report. It got called a lot of other things, too. Especially by supply truck drivers. <laughs> You'd have to snicker to see them creeping down in first gear with brakes of smoking. They always drove with cab doors wide open. <laughs> and not for ventilation, either. Well, we laughed, but mister, <laughs> if I'd been on that truck, I'd have been riding a running board. <laughs> Dear Mother Nature can be plenty mean when she takes a mind. Like one day on spread four, one of those quick thunderstorms came up. Crew didn't pay it much mind, till zow! Lightning knocked out Blackie Condors are foreman, Speck Arthur and Inspector, and half a dozen of the crew. We thought they was gone. But they all lived. And then, Outside Petersburg, West Virginia, a cloudburst hit us. Sky just seemed to open up all at once. In no time, every little fold in the hills was Niagara Falls. Got most of the equipment out. And then, by radio, we hear the town of Petersburg was about washed away. Five dead, a lot missing. Well, you know pipeliners. You know about what chance it was of holding them back. How they ever got into Petersburg, I'll never know. But on cats, known foot, they did. They just took over the town. <laughs> A lot of surprised little old ladies rode out of their houses on Oklahoma shoulders that afternoon. And they liked it. <laughs> Before the water was down, our dozers was clearing away debris to let our trucks bring supplies in. And our generators were supplying power. And our radio was maintaining communication with the outside. When the folks tried to thank the boss, he just blushed like a girl, shifted his eating tobacco and says, well, <laughs> we couldn't have worked on the job anyways. Everybody laughed. 